Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is Martin from martinmixing.com and in today's video I will show you how to take your Steven Slade drums drum kits to the next level with some basic mixing techniques. So in the first part we tackled Logic drums and how to make them sound better with just a few simple tweaks on the drum group as a whole. In this video I'll go a bit more in depth. We'll actually break down the individual parts of the drum kit into their own channels and we'll do some individual tweaks to all the separate instruments that make up this drum kit. So the snare, hi-hat, kick, overheads, we'll tweak them all a bit separately. So without further ado, I would say let's jump right into it. Okay, so as you can see, I have Logic open here. I have Steven Slade drums open here. I have just picked a random kit that I thought sounded good. I have SSD5 Deluxe 2 here. I went into rock kits and I think it's the alternative kit that I chose, which is literally the first one. It sounds good to me. All of these drums sound really good and no, I'm not sponsored by them. They don't pay me to say that. I do actually think that these are the best ones out there. But anyway, so I loaded this kit. I went into the grooves here and I picked a few, again, just straight random MIDI bars here that I dropped in. So we have a bit of a verse, a fill, again verse, fill, chorus, chorus and the fill. I just picked these randomly and not a lot of thought went into them. I would say this gives us a really good starting point to make further tweaks. So let's have a look how this sounds just on its own. Okay, so quite standard rocky kind of stuff, nothing mind-blowing. So again, what I told you in the first episode where we tackled Logic drums with some really basic settings, that same principle can be applied here as well. We could just take a random EQ and a bit of compression and make this sound really, really awesome just as it is. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to do it. So I'm just gonna load an instance of the virtual mix rack. Clearly the drums now as they are, they sound amazing. Nothing is wrong with them at all. It's punchy, it's loud, it's well balanced. There's nothing technically wrong with the drums, but in the context of a mix, in the context of a whole song, there will be some things missing. So clearly once guitars, vocal synths are in, we, there will be a lack of treble. We could have a bit more bass and likely we'll want a bit more clarity in the mid range to make space for the other instruments that will drop into our arrangement, maybe in a future video down the line. So I'm gonna compensate for these things now with a few simple tweaks, let's have a look. So this literally took me something like 10 seconds, so I just boost a little bit of treble. You can see the numbers here, 5 dB at 12K, as always. Uh, I left the upper mids as they are, lower mid range, there was a bit of woofy, muddy kind of thing at 300. As always with drums, it's, when you mix enough, when you mix similar instruments or just any instruments uh, long enough or enough of them in terms of quantity, you'll see that the areas you have to EQ are usually the same. We always have the same problems and they always appear in the same areas. So yeah, I compensated for this 300 little mud and I boosted a little bit of 80 just to give it a bit more punch. No low cut, nothing needed. And um, this would be it, honestly. Like, this is a really good sounding kit as it is. We can put guitars, bass and vocals, happy days. Um, if you want to take it a little bit further, we can take Yeah, so we can do a bit of compression and we can do parallel compression. All of these things that I described in the previous video, I'll put a link in the description below. 
But this is boring. So what would I do now if I wanted to mix everything separately? And here's where things become a bit more interesting. So first and foremost, we have to create tracks. We'll have to create channels for all of the individual instruments. How do we do that? We go into the mix window here. And as you can see, we have a separate mixer here in Steven Slade drums, uh, where every instrument has its own channel and with its own channel comes its own output as well. So quickly, I'm going to assign all of these instruments its own output. So as you can see, now we have our kick here on uh, channel one, and then with this plus button here, if I selected multi output on the SST sampler, I can create additional auxiliaries that colorate specifically to Steven Slade drums or this particular plugin. So we have kick, snare, toms, hi-hat, plus ride, overheads, room separated onto separate tracks. And if I want, I can now create tracks for all of these and I can have them up here in my edit window. To keep things really simple, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my virtual mix rack on the SSL setting, which is the simplest. Everyone will have some sort of SSL channel strip at home, I would say. <laughs> or with at home, I mean in your DAW. So everyone will have an SSL EQ and some sort of SSL compressor that you can use. These are the simplest tools. If you don't have one, I highly encourage you to invest in this. If you are somewhat serious about mixing, this is the most basic, the least you should have to do proper work, I would say.
Okay, so as you can see, I did it quite quickly and uh, there's just a few tweaks I did, but I want to walk you through them. So, what happened here on the kick, of course, we added a little bit of top, a little bit of these upper mids with quite a wide bell just to boost a bit of that attack. I don't like to boost narrowly on the upper mids because it makes the kick a bit too pointy. So I rather boost treble and a bit of mid range to get a wide attack, so to speak, to cover a wider spectrum. So it cuts through in multiple different systems and not just one that happens to have that one particular peak at one frequency. A bit of cut in the lower mids as always and a bit of boost. This is basically the setting that we used on the kit as a whole, except it's a bit more aggressive and it has this boost on the upper mids. But this works, I was able to go a bit more aggressive on these upper mids here. And then a bit of compression, not because the dynamics are off or because it's played badly or anything, but just to give it a bit more attack, a bit more punch that I thought is really good. Then on the snare, bit more aggressive on the treble boost and there was a little bit of this woody woof something in the lower mids I didn't like but I boosted a lot of lows with a wide bell to give it a lot more power and com uh, combined with the compression we have a really really heavy aggressive sounding snare with this let's just check So that works. On the toms you have to be a bit more aggressive usually, so we added a lot more treble here and I cut a bit more in these lower mids that are just really annoying. So those can really go and you can hear how much the sound opens up. On toms you have to be quite a bit more aggressive and usually what happens is that when you mix drums is that you get the attack and some of the body from the direct mics, but most of the tone will actually come from the overheads and the rooms. So on its own the tom mics are never enough to get a really good tom sound. You have to combine them with good overheads and good drums. And this is why it's so important to get a good recording when you record drums. You need, you need good drums, a good drummer, a good room. We talked about this before to get a really good sound. Especially toms are super duper hard to record. So together they work really, really nicely. The hi-hat I just left as it is, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. Most of it is coming from the overheads anyway. I boosted the volume but it doesn't even make that much of a difference. So you can leave it as it is. Overheads, however, a bit more treble, again a bit more aggressive. We know guitars will be coming in, etc. And because it boosted quite a lot already on the kick and snare, we can't really afford leaving the cymbals behind, which of course come from the overheads. Then, interestingly, we had a 600 hertz something going on. I was expecting something a bit lower, but that wasn't the case. Let's just have a listen at that. So that sounds, that sounds a lot cleaner, that sounds a lot nicer to me. And just for good measure, I added a low cut at 80, just to make sure that the kick really stands alone. Here on the room, I'm usually careful with the treble. I don't like to boost treble because I know I'll be adding a lot of compression and I don't want to make the cymbal sound too kind of splashy and washed out. So usually I leave the overheads to deliver most of the cymbals. And from the room, I want a bit more body on the individual shells, a bit more body to the tone as a whole. So as you can see here, I also took out a little bit of the harshness that exists at around 5K in the cymbals. And then the same kind of muddy area again, around 480, that was bothering me. And as you can see, I used quite a wide bell for this. Um, on the compression side, this is interesting, I used a fast attack a threshold just cranked to the maximum and infinite to, infinity to one ratio. So we're basically limiting. This is really, really heavy compression. And I played around with the release a little bit. I know if it's too fast, it will just start distorting a bit too much. If it's too slow, you're not really getting that kind of pumpy effect, but let's just have a look. So let's leave it at medium. So as you can hear on the fastest setting, it was just 
a bit peaky on the slower setting it was just quieter nothing really happened it just reduced the gain here somewhere in the middle works really well with the fast attack so this is it in 10 minutes or not even 10 minutes we already managed to get a really good sounding kit just with a few basic tweaks let's have a quick listen at the before and after Okay, so as you can hear, there's quite a significant difference. The kit cleaned up a lot. It sounds a lot more powerful. And all we did was a few basic tweaks. Now, of course, from here, I could take it potentially a bit further. I could add some processing on the drum bus. I could add some parallel compression, all of these fancy things, but that I'll leave to the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it is helpful. I hope this will help you producers and composers getting better sounds out of your software that you have with just a few basic tweaks. In the next video we'll focus on even more in-depth drum mixing, we'll take some live drums and how to make those sound really good. So thank you for watching, if you like this video please like and subscribe and leave your comments below, I always check what you write and I always try to respond and I'll be seeing you in the next video and until then happy mixing, take it easy, bye bye.